solicits. We have October solicits, and there's a lot of weird new little things coming out of this. Uh, there was a lot of announcements leading up to solicits, but as we like to do, we'd rather just go through the solicits. Uh, if there's anything straggling behind that wasn't in the solicits, there was also announced this week. Uh, we'll get to that afterwards. Uh, but quite frankly, I was saying this just before we started, that the, the the text and the articles when they announce things before solicits tends to be very convoluted, and the information is often quite buried, which is really annoying when you're trying to like get access it by eye quickly when you're on a podcast talking about it. The solicitors presents it in a nice, simple format, which is consistent, and it's much easier to read. So, we're just going to go through this in order. Obviously, a couple of things were announced the previous week. We'll obviously reiterate those as we're going through these. Um, but let's get into it. So, Batman the Imposter, issue one. Was this new this week? I actually don't know. This, this is new this week. Okay. <laughs> We've not spoken about this yet. Was this last week? I can't remember. No, this was Monday, I believe. Right. So yeah, this is a story by Mattson Tomlin. This is art by Andrea Sorrentino, which obviously is the the maybe the big sell here for a lot of people. This is a black label Batman book. It is three three issues, forty eight pages. So one of these prestige, oversized three issue books. Very pretty cover, and it's going to have a Behermo variant as well. So uh, I imagine both covers are going to be very. Pretty. I mean, I'm looking at the Behermo variant oh, now, there? and it is it's very nice. Yeah. Oh, is there? So that reminds me of that reminds me of remember uh, I've not even read this story but the uh, the Batman Fugitive Murderer mm. covers I, I, I see I, it. yeah I, I could, just because of the shadow on the wall behind him uh, although he's clearly facing against someone else dressed as Batman it looks a bit but which yeah, I mean makes it's sense fine. it's called the Imposter so I assume yeah. there's going to be an Imposter Batman but the question is is he wearing hockey pads on that the uh, the premise is to do with um. Uh, you know, what if Batman was in the real world? It's it's one of those sorts of books. Oh, really? Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, and um, the guy who's writing it, uh, Matt Matson Tomlin, um, this is a director and screenwriter. Uh, it, it's kind of like Project Power and Little Fish here. Interestingly, and again, this is not official from Warner because they're a f- not saying this, mm-hmm. but on his IMDb page and a couple of other p- places, it has him listed as a co-writer for um. The new Batman movie coming up. Oh, interesting. So it could be interesting, yeah. Interesting. I'll, I'll just I'll read this uh, for the new stuff. It is the kind of worth just reading the solicit text anyway. Uh, Bruce Wayne's mission as the Batman has only been underway for a year or so, but he but he can tell that he's making a difference. Unfortunately, he's made some powerful enemies. All the traditional power brokers of Gotham resent the disruption the Batman has brought to town, and it seems that uh, one of them has a plan to neutralize him. That's a second Batman haunting Gotham's rooftops and alleys. And it's one who has no qualms, qualms, qualms about murdering criminals live and on tape. But the entire might of the Gotham City Police Department and Gotham's rich and powerful coming down on his head, Batman must find the imposter and somehow clear his name. But how can you prove your innocence from behind a mask? So it's interesting because it doesn't actually mention here about the real world aspect of it. No, that was all in just the um, those horrifically awkward articles yes. that you were talking about before. It was in that in that where they talked about that element of it. So, so the idea is that this Batman's just in the real world, and there's no other superheroes, and there's an imposter of that real Batman. I believe so. Okay, <laughs> just to keep track, because I was wondering, is it, is it like a a Batman from the real world? Like, is the imposter in the the real the, it, the, the I, DC I, Batman I, world? Like, I, I think the impression is it's kind of uh, kick-ass esque okay. in the sense of you okay. know I mean let's treat this as if it's the real world. All right, all right, okay, go go go. All right, then we have Batman one hundred fourteen and one hundred and fifteen, uh, two issues again, which again I'm I'm totally okay with because they slowed down the other books so that this could go double shipping, and because it's doing like an event style thing, I'm still okay with that. I think that's a good pacing for a big story. Like I would this. say yeah, the most interesting things about these are the the backups. Uh, 114, not so much. It's just the end of the Clown Hunter backup that will be happening after the, the Ghost Maker one. Sure. Uh, but 115 starts a new backup uh, written by uh, Clunan and Conrad, who are obviously doing Wonder Woman and a couple mm. other things right now. Uh, and it's a, it's a Batgirl's backup. I'm on board. I'm on board for Yeah, that. I thought you would be. Uh, I mean, I'll give this Clown Hunter backup a try as well. Obviously, I, I noped out of the Ghost uh, Maker one, but... Maker. Yeah. You know, like I can I can dip back into the other ones as they as they seem interesting or different. Because let's be honest, because like, because it's still tiny and it's writing the Ghost Maker one. I I, I just, I'm just I think he's co-writing it, isn't uh, it? 
but I'm just kind of not. I'm just like I'm out. The, the the story wasn't doing much for me, and it doesn't feel like I'm going to miss much by not having read it. Um, so, but you know, I'll, I'll definitely read it back. Yeah, that no, you will. No problem with that. Uh, now a new book next. I'll note down Tally Mark number two. Uh, yeah. th- this is Arkham City, The Order of the World, issue one. And this is, in continuity, this is uh, spinning out of the AD attacks. This is all coming from that. Um, this is one of six. So this is a six-issue book. A story by Dan Waters and art by Danny. Do you know who Danny is? Yeah, Danny did uh, Lolo Woods. Oh, okay. All right. That could be interesting for about ba- ba- the Gotham villain story. That, that could be interesting. Yeah. So here- here's the uh, person. The Joker's attack in Arkham left a long-standing Gotham establishment in ruin. Most of the patients killed or missing, and only a handful of surviving staff. A few nurses, a gravely injured security guard, and one doctor. In the chaos of the assault, it is believed that several of the asylum's patients escaped and scurried off into the dark nooks and crannies of Gotham City. Now these Arkhamites walk among us, and it's up to the asylum's one remaining doctor, uh, Jocasta Joy, if I'm pronouncing that right, to round up her former patients. Uh, meet these Archimates, a woman with no face, a piggy in search of perfection. That has to be Professor Pig, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, a man who feels nothing but burns everything, Firefly. Uh, a woman who must devour life to save herself. I'm sure that's someone, but I can't think of who. Yeah, a woman with no face is probably uh, the dollmaker's Oh okay. Person. Right? I, I immediately thought of uh, Lady Clayface or Mudface or whatever. Yeah, or or it could be um uh Duella Dent, right? She's oh, going sure. around with the Joker yeah. mask. Uh a man unfit for the waking world who looks instead for Wonderland, Mad Hatter, I would presume. Uh a body with more than one soul. I don't know who that is. More than one soul. Not off the top of my head, no. Huh. A being unbound from time who lives in the present and the past. Oh. <laughs> so the tra- yeah. I, don't, I don't know who that is, but it's interesting. A boy who seeks the comfort of vermin. Oh, it's, oh that's a boy. I was going to say maybe Ratcatcher or something like that. But I was as well, but... The boy. Uh, and then a twisted man who sees them all for who they are. That sounds... And, and witness the avenging angel who stalks them. Oh, eventually, I missed the last part. Uh, that last one before the angel, I, I was getting slight psycho pirate vibes from it, maybe, but no, I don't think so. I don't think I, because he's too busy on the infinite frontier stuff. I don't expect it to be him, but yeah. Uh, so this is an interesting premise. I kind of like this. Obviously, yeah, there's a lot of Gotham books, there's a lot of bat books, but I think this one's interesting because it's a very different focus. It's a it's a doctor trying to track down escapees from Arkham. I actually think that sounds kind of cool. Yeah, me too. And um, I've enjoyed everything I've tried from Dan Waters so far. Yeah, both of these uh, covers are fantastic. But the main one I kind of want to point out here, I think is very intentionally harkening back to Grant Morrison's Arkham Asylum, A Serious House and A Serious Art. It's a very similar title style. The art it is. I, um, I saw a tweet from the graphic designer who did the trade dress for it earlier, hmm. um, who was saying, you know, once they knew the, the title was, you know, uh, Arkham City, uh, they were asked if they wanted to make it a homage to Arkham Asylum. I dig it. I dig it. Um, and the cover as well. I mean, obviously you have the the text style, the the titles written like that book was, but uh, the actual image itself. You you've got this sort of moody looking city, but you've got like regular people walking on like you know the small you know the small sort of bridge you get in like a, a park over a little stream, and you've got yeah. uh, just the the villains underneath like glowing red. It's a gorgeous really nice. cover. Very pretty. And the, the variant actually is really cool too. It's just obviously its own thing. It's a Matina cover. It looks great. Yeah. The, the variant. But the main one is very distinctive. So that's very neat. That's very, very, very neat. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I have to say, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm down for both new books so far, but this one is the one that's speaking to me just a, a touch more. Me too. The, the first one has Sorrentino art, which is yeah. very appealing. So, which alone probably guarantees me trying it. Um, but this one is the more well-rounded concept. Yeah, there we got Batman Secret Files, Peacekeeper 1. Uh, not counting this as new, because obviously this, this Secret Files uh, thing's been running. We haven't actually tried the two so far, and part of that's interest, part of that's just because they've come out in busy weeks. There's definitely some that I will probably will read, just because of the characters that they're focusing on, but... This one in particular is co-written by Tynan. Yes. And uh, it feels like it's probably pretty 
heavily tied into everything, given it's Peacekeeper 1. So uh, more yeah. likely to try this one, I think. Cool, written with Ed Brisson, who... I associate, that's, that's someone I associate with Marvel, right? I feel like Ed Brisson's done a lot of Marvel. I think he did like a, a bunch of X books yeah. around the time, maybe around after, just after Taylor was finishing. Uh, Joshua Hickson uh, on the art in this one. Uh, who I don't know, actually. Uh, so. Not me either. Uh, interesting. Uh, Catwoman 36. Uh, not much to say, it's just Cat- Catwoman's continuing. Pardon me. Yeah, um, another different artist, but I have complete faith right now. Yeah, and it's uh, it's still Fear State labelled at the top, so still tying into that, uh, which is neat. Uh, seems to have Harley as well as Ivy in it, so it seems like we're doing like a sort of Gotham City Sirens esque kind of tail inside Catwoman, which is which is cool, especially through the lens that the Catwoman book has and the tone that it has. Uh, I think it's kind of neat. So uh, then we got Nightwing eighty five. We got Batgirl in her her new outfit uh, with Nightwing jumping through the sky. Um, which is cool. Um, yep. So that's, that's very neat. I'm just going to check out the variant while I'm here. Uh, that's not bad. Uh, Jamal Campbell variant. Neat. Uh, we got Detective Comics 1044. Uh, Dan Mora back on the art for this one. I don't know if he was back in the previous issue, but he's on this one at least. Uh, obviously, we've got Bogdanovich on the current issues, which is not a complaint because Bogdanovich is also very good. Yeah, it's basically there's a break for Mora every so often to do an arc of um, mm. Once and Future. Mm. And then he's back doing this. Uh, which, I mean, fine by me, I'm winning on both books there. Sure. Uh, and obviously it was double shipping. I mean, it's double shipping right now, actually, to be more precise. But just in terms of solicits, it was double shipping. Uh, so I wonder, like, does it go back to double shipping once Fear State's wrapped up, or are they going to keep rotating books that maybe just need like a quicker arc here or there? Uh, I, I, I'm, all, I'm all for the flexibility, though. I've said it before, but I, I like the... You know, some books can double shift for a couple months when they've got a big story to get through. Uh, Marvel's, uh, like, 18 issues a year. Yeah. It actually works really nicely. It, it is. It, it's not... Like, the OCD in me doesn't like the, the lack of consistency, but I do appreciate... Especially... Because Marvel, I think, pace them out, at least when they're to schedule, like, once every three weeks, so it feels consistent. Whereas mm-hmm. DC are doing this thing where it just switches to a double schedule when they're on two, yeah. and then back to one again. But... Hey, that's what it is. It's a, it's a nitpick. It's not a real complaint. Uh, so that's cool, because that book's been great. Uh, I Am Batman issue 2. Obviously looking forward to that. The John Ridley Next Batman stuff. Um, obviously, I did not read Next Batman issue 4 last week, because I, I just ran out of time uh, to read books. But I probably won't talk about it on the show properly, but I will probably make a point of reading it before issue 1 of this. Or issue 0. I guess is more precise, because there's an issue 0 of it. Is there a 0? Uh, Let's yeah. find my next month then. Is it next month? Yeah, Fear State's already going in September. It's next month because it's, it's all the prelude to Fear State that uh, it's included in. Yeah, well, I'm just assuming if two is in October. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's a couple of those one shots that are leading into Fear State uh, to go along. That and, makes sense. Yeah. And then Batman itself, obviously, is the actual, the actual thing. Uh, and then we got Batman: Urban Legends issue eight. Uh, got a Batwoman on the cover. Interesting here. sounding stories in the. Two well, Fear State tie-ins. Joe, you know, I kind of like using this for Fear State tie-ins. Is rather than doing a bunch of one-shots, you know, Fear State Batwoman, Fear State Outsiders. No, no, just ha- put it in your Batman anthology book and have yeah. them be Fear State tie-ins. I, I think that's a really neat way of doing it. Uh, so we got a Batwoman Fear State uh, story. We got an Outsiders Fear State story, and we have Azrael, uh getting a story, and then a Professor Pig story. Um, it doesn't sound like any of them are multiple parts, though. It sounds like they're all one and dones. Uh, I could buy the Fear State ones being more than one. Possibly, I mean, possibly, yeah. Uh, but it doesn't specify that they're parts one of whatever at any point. No. So, which is a bit of a shame because I, I kind of like the idea of having like mini series nestled in there, and it's part of the appeal for me. Like, you know, the 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 two stories in the middle of Urban Legends tend to be the weaker part for the book. Uh, so that's cool. Harley Quinn issue eight still going. Not much to add, I don't think. Um. No, or, it's or, a first date tie-in. I was looking forward to it, though, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, there we got another new book, so I'll tally this one down. This is number three. This is Task Force Z, or Task Force Z, depending on where you are. Depending on how it. terrible you are. Uh, so this is, this is basically dead villains are being reanimated into zombies. It is a zombified version of, obviously, Task Force X. Uh, Matthew Rosenberg... 
uh, speaking of that, that Grifter story in Urban Legends, uh, Rosenberg's writing this. Eddie Barrows is on art, so uh, I think he fits a zombie story. I can see Eddie Barrows doing... I can as well, yeah. That's Barrows is solid. Uh, so, yeah, in life they've terrorised... And this is an ongoing, but this is not a mini. Uh, the... This is... This is not just an ongoing. This is the new ongoing home of the Red Hood. Oh, really? <laughs> this is this is essentially the new Red Hood book. Okay, okay. Well, I'll, I'll read the uh, the solicit text here. In life, they've terrorized people of Gotham. Now they are Gotham's last hope. Task Force X saw villains working with their way to freedom. Task Force Z will see dead villains working for a new chance at life. On A Day, so this is again spin out of A Day. So this is much like the Arkham City book. We'll get more A-Day stuff. Uh, this is very much in continuity. I, I, I love all this, like, A-Day was such a big deal, all these things can spin out of it. I kind of like that. And not right away either. Like, A-Day, we've already ha- we've known about A-Day for months at this point. I love that there's still things. Oh, by the way, there's some psychological after effects of A-Day. There's mm-hmm. doctors chasing down people. And then we've got this. So, on A-Day, an attack at Arkham Asylum left hundreds of Gotham's most cunning and deranged criminals dead. Now a mysterious benefactor has activated the government's task force clause to bring the... <laughs> the clots <laughs> task force clots and it's in the rules to bring them back as the ultimate army of the night to lead the team of the undead the only person who knows exactly what it feels like to be brutally murdered and brought back to life can handle the job enter red hood but when jason todd unravels the mis- mis- mystery surrounding task force z's creation uh will he try to destroy it or embrace it uh bane man bat the arkham knight sundowner who mr bloom <laughs> red hood they're all Task Force Zed, and death was just the beginning. Uh, why did Man Bat die? Is that just like Dark Thing? I don't think so. Interesting. Okay. When did Bane die? Oh, Bane died in AD. Oh, okay, yeah. They found his body. That, that, well. that, that's why all the uh, Santa Priscilla like Bane cult are chasing Joker and Joker. No, down. I do remember that now. Yeah. Uh... I don't know who Sundowner is, but uh, Mr. Bloom coming back is interesting. Uh, I'm glad he's dead, yeah. though. Sure. <laughs> I was not a big fan of that part of Snyder's Batman, so I'm, I'm glad M- that he's Mr. dead. Mr. Bloom and Sundowner are the, uh, they're, they're the, the, the ones that you throw into the Suicide Squad to just like, right, okay, they're the, they're the dead meat. Yeah. Well, in this case, they're already dead, though, so I, I, this may not follow typical Suicide Squad rules. And kill them as many times as you want. That's, that's true. They'll just keep coming back, unless you can put like sever all the, the limbs and head. And I mean, if that, yeah, we don't know. Get, what, we don't know what the rules are. Maybe they can Frankenstein. Even if they do get caught, maybe they can just stitch them back together again. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so that's cool. We got a Batman Fortnite one shot because that's the, done such a, a... The, the most interesting thing about this for me is that they're treating this with respect and they put Scott Snyder on it. And Christos like, Gage. This is this is not a, just a throwaway thing. Yeah, even Christos Gage though he's co-writing with. Uh, and also Do- Donald Mustard. I assume they're all doing their own stories rather than co-writing them, admittedly. But anyway, but Christos Gage, you know, he's done a lot of fairly interesting stuff here or there. You know, he he's did uh, some of the interesting Spider-Man books, right? Yeah. Th- didn't he also do like one of the Angel books when when Dark Horse? He might well have done. Yeah, that's uh, nice uh, familiar. Yeah, I, I want to say that that was he did a lot of that. Um, and uh, on top of that, obviously, yeah, Snyder doing a story here is. Obviously, them giving it some, you know, some star power, basically. Uh, so, okay, yeah, I, and they got a, a Capullo cover, which they haven't showed us yet, but a Capullo cover. They're, they're putting talent onto this book. Well, it's clearly selling very well, and that's fine. It can go sell well. I'm, I'm going to ignore it forever. <laughs> I mean, that's fine. I'm not going to read it either, but, you know. Yes. Uh, next I, I, was, I wasn't counting this towards my tally either, because it's a one-shot. Yes, yes, yes. I wasn't going to count this towards the tally either. Uh, Batman The Long Halloween Special, which we knew about. Uh, I noticed when David cut up last week's episode and put it up on the channel as individual uh, videos, I noticed he referred to this in the news, in the headline, as the longer Halloween, which I thought was vaguely amusing. So I'll give David oh, some cool. some that's quite good. minor cred. Minor. Why didn't you come up with anything like that? Because I, uh, I referenced something else. I referenced... Uh, I think the Swamp Thing and my title of the, the full episode. So, yeah, yeah, I was talking about this last week. Uh, this is the, the Loeb Tim sale coming back for a 48-page special, uh, which obviously is exciting. Uh, even though Loeb's output is not being exactly great for a long time, it hopefully it's a nice, fun, fun throwback to that. Uh, it's a one-shot with Tim Sale art. I'm, I'm yes. going to read it for that. Yes. Uh, and then we have, uh, I think this is completely new, 
this week, uh, is, which yep. is Catwoman in Lonely City, issue one. It is a mini series. It's uh, a four issue prestige plus, which means it's the different size trim. Yeah. I was going to say, because it's not on the cover, but I assume it's black label. It just feels. It, looks, uh, it is, yeah. Given the, the four issues, given the size of the issues of 48 pages, it just looks like a black label. Book. I think that's because it's shown the variant first. Maybe. Oh, no, it's not. Yeah. I mean, the second cover does have the uh, the DC label on it. They've just not yeah. put, put the dress on it yet. Uh, yeah. But, uh, oh, I actually, I actually think I like the variant more, to be honest. <laughs> mm. uh, but this is like Catwoman jumping through the night city, but there's a. That's like, really nice, isn't there's it? There's a silhouette behind her, but in the silhouette, it's all these past versions of Catwoman. Uh, it's, just any, it's any cover. Uh, so, this is Cliff Chang, uh, who's both doing the, the writing and the art, which is uh, very interesting. This is the solicit text here. Uh, wait, is this Jock cover here? See, no, it isn't. Okay. Well, I'm not going to look at There's a Jock variant that's 1 in 25. I'll be looking for yeah, that. Yeah, neither of those are jock covers. Yeah. Uh, ten years ago, the massacre known as Fool's Night claimed the lives of Batman, the Joker, Nightwing, and Commissioner Gordon. Obviously, this is Black Label, it's out of continuity. <laughs> Just uh, keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. And sent Selina Kyle, the Catwoman, to prison. A decade later, Gotham has grown up. It's put away costume heroism and villainy and childish things. The new Gotham is cleaner, safer, and a lot less free. Under the watchful eye of Mayor Harvey Dent and the Bat Cops. <laughs> the Bat Cops. Uh, it's into this new city that Selena Kale returns a changed woman, with her mind on the last big score. The secret's hidden inside the Batcave. She does. She doesn't need the money. She just needs to know who is Orpheus. I thought I was going to say who is Batman, but who is okay? Who is Orpheus? It's more interesting, I think. Yeah, uh, we don't know the answer. Yeah, we don't know the answer. Uh, did, did she know who Batman was in this, this continuity? We'll find out, I guess. But I mean, I'm, I'm assuming this is not Orpheus, the son of Dream. From Sandman. I doubt it. And also from but, Greek mythology. That would be weird. I but... mean, it's possible, but I doubt it. Yeah. I doubt it. Uh, I'll put an old tally mark because the next one is uh, also also one very book. exciting because Cliff Chang, uh, I, I don't actually know much about his writing, but his art is utterly gorgeous. Oh, I already tallied that one. I was tallying for this next one, which is DC versus Vampires, which is a 12 issue book. I guess I guess the, uh, the deceased did well that they thought maybe we can do another. Oh. oh. I can tell you why this exists in a minute when we talk, okay. after we talk about what the series is. Well, so, but they wanted another, well, you'll know why, but I, I you know, I, my instinct was, oh, they did zombies, now we'll do vampires. So, DCV's Vampires, issue one. Uh, James Tay in the fourth, and Matthew Rosenberg co-writing this, which, honestly, <laughs> is a pretty good team to get me into uh, it. This is, uh, Tynan did a 12-issue breakdown, and then Rosenberg's worked all the scripts out from that. I have no problems with that, that, uh, and uh, Otto Hearing. Schmidt on art as well. Yeah, Otto Schmidt. Uh, happy to see him back in a DC book. And that cover is uh, very pretty. It's Batman with vampire. He's the blood That's Martina Batman. cover, right? That's Martina, yeah. Uh, there's also a Wonder Woman Harley, which I don't like as much, I have to admit. But uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, that's not mm. Schmidt, though, is it? That has to be a variant. The regular Schmidt one's there, if you keep going. It's got Green Arrow on it as well. There's a Green Lantern cover, which is all right, the variant. Uh, there's the Schmidt, Schmidt one. Of course, Green, of course Green Arrow's on the Schmidt cover. Yeah, <laughs> of, of course. course. Of course, they put Grado on the Schmidt cover. Uh, but that's cool. I do like the yeah, the, the, the logo. It's the DC's like, and the vampire teeth. It's, it's very pulpy. I like the pulpiness of it. I, that's I, good. I can get on board with that. So, the Justice League has long protected Earth from all manner of foreign and alien invaders over the years, always keeping a vigilant eye on the skies for the next threat. But what if the next threat was already walking the Earth, hiding in plain sight, watching, waiting for their moment to strike? And the tradition of deceased. Yep, just admit it. Comes a terrifying new series from the twisted minds of Jube Stein in the fourth. Uh, when they put Nice House in the Lake as his first like credit here to reference. Mm. Uh, and Matthew Rosenberg. Uh, that's a couple of things for him. And Otto Schmidt. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is this is this is neat. The, the, honestly, like I would be mildly interested on the premise. Like, okay, sounds fun and pulpy. But you put Tynan, Rosenberg, and Schmidt on on that list of names, and I'm I'm on board. Yeah. Um, so the fun backstory to this book was told in Tynan's newsletter. Hmm. Um, Tynan got very candid about 5G. Um, this exists because uh, when he was coming towards the end of his Batman run and 5G was meant to be going ahead, he did not want to be a part of 5G. And, and this is just to clarify here, because uh, just to, for people listening, uh, his Batman run was going to end... Bef- uh, Originally, what, issue 100, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the fact that he continued was 
actually one of the first things that was like, oh no, he's because we talked about this, the fact that he he kept going because he was happy that 5G was done and yeah. they, weren't, they weren't doing it and so on, right? Yeah. yeah, so basically he spoke really candidly about what 5G was um, and basically said that, that DC wanted to create the stories for everything in-house. They wanted their own little committee that came up with the stories for all the books and gave them to the writers and then the writers would go away and write the scripts for the stories that they had been asked for. Mm. And apparently there was like no flexibility. This is why you know, we, we heard Williamson not long ago was saying he didn't want to be part of it. Uh, and Tynan was basically saying he didn't want to be part of it at all either. But, but he was still under contract with an exclusive contract for DC and he owed them two ongoing books at a time. And he had Nice House on the Lake lined up. But without Batman, he was like, well, I owe him another book. I, I have to do something. And he was like, well, Deceased is selling quite well. I, would you be happy enough for me to do another Deceased-style book uh, as, as my second book? And they went, yeah, sure, don't see why not. So he wrote a full 12-issue breakdown, and then 5G collapsed, and he stayed on Batman and had no time to write it. <laughs> Which mean... is basically why they went, can we get someone else in to write it? And, you know, you know who would you like? And he was like, well, if we get someone like Matt Rosenberg, uh, you know, I think he's he'd have a great voice because but I don't think we could get him, but you know, we'll try him anyway. Uh, and, then... and fast forward a few months and he's like on like three DC books. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's it's wouldn't surprise me if maybe we're seeing this late, but we've known that this DC Vampires book in some form was coming for a while. That we learned this at um that uh retailer event a while back, if yeah. you remember. Yeah, yeah, it was on that list of ten, and it, so was, a, it, was, a really, it was a really weird list of ten as well. It wasn't like big notable ongoings. It was like weird projects. It, yeah, so I wonder if maybe when they reached out for him for this book, that, that was the first step, and then it's gone to other books after that. But we've seen the, the results of those first. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, but this uh, exists to fill a contractual obligation. Just on, on the the point though about the, the whole committee of of the in house DC doing the stories and then just giving them to writers to script. Uh, that is horrendous. That is yeah. that is the factory produced content. But anyway, uh, cool. That sounds fun. Uh, interesting how it came to be, but uh, very very neat. Uh, I, I you know, it, and it's, it's funny that Tynan and Williamson, if, if these are the two people who were speaking out against wanting to be a part of this crazy new system that Diddy or whoever was trying to put in place, I think it's fascinating that those two are now like two of the the writers spearheading the entire universe of DC Comics right it's, now. It's very notable that Tynan. Obviously, he's doing the bat books, but he's doing a lot of other stuff and is a guaranteed bank of sales. When you know you look like Nice House on the Lake uh, and everything else, he's doing independently, just a sales juggernaut right now. And then you know, Williamson is driving the current event. Yeah, and and it's worth mentioning, you know, because he's the one on Batman, he's the one you know basically dictating what the direction of Gotham as a whole is. So even though I'm sure all the other people working on Bat books, they all, I mean, the books are all doing quite well, so they all feel like the the teams seem quite happy with what they're. But typically, traditionally, whoever the writer on Batman, the titled Batman book is, they are the one who kind of comes first in terms of saying this is what's going on in Gotham, and then everyone else works in that status quo, and. That's just. The, I mean, someone has to be making those calls. That's just the way it has to work. It's that's not like a, a like a ego thing or anything. Yeah, like that. And, and it's but, always going to be either Batman or Detective. You work around those yeah. books as uh, well. And I actually think Detective is the even better book, which is a testament because Batman's actually freaking great right now. It's just that Tamaki is doing such a great job of working within that. I think I think I prefer Batman, but I mean, yeah, I mean it's. I'm happy with both. They're both in really great places. But the point is, is he he is spearheading the most successful and popular corner of DC. Williamson spearheading the the overall crisis event style thing that's taking the entire direction of the the thing. So it's, it's just it's interesting that those two who spoke up and were vocal and didn't want to be part of that ended up getting these prominent jobs because someone came to the senses at DC <laughs> and said, "Let's not do this," yeah. and move on. So thank God, right? Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine what a weird like we were excited for the idea of five G because we wanted something fresh that was before we, wanted... we yeah we didn't know all this though we didn't know about all these details no, no we didn't know any about these things we kind of knew vague ideas of oh well let's kind of you know play with the timeline have like you know superman batman one one be physically older and we were into that but if we'd lost all these creators and it had been that committee overseeing everything we'd be miserable right now oh absolutely we, we, we th this this podcast would have become a like a painful chore 
Uh, so also someone just uh, commented, I, I I hope Connor recovers. <laughs> From I'm getting there. Thank you, illness. whoever you are. It was someone asked why there wasn't a new Star Trek review, or when is the next Star Trek review coming in? I just said, oh, Carter's got COVID. <laughs> Bear with us. <laughs> yeah, it, it slowed things down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, cool, cool. Uh, all right, back to solicits then. Yes. Uh, Human Target, we talked about this already, but this is a new book, so I'll tally it uh, yep. for October. Uh, this is the Tom King book, one of 12. Hey, you know what? If you put Tom King's name in a book and say it's 12 issues, I'm basically it. <laughs> I'm not necessarily going to love it, because, you know, I haven't looked, liked all of them. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm probably going to try, especially if you stick, like, Smallwood art, and you, you tell me that I can't believe it's not the Justice League are in it. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm there. I I mean, I, I have, though. This is the funny thing. All of his 12 books, all, all, of, his, all of his Black Label books, you know, Mr. Miracle... Strange Adventures, Rorschach, I freaking love. Talk more on that later. Uh, and I mean, Supergirl, yeah, the first issue wasn't like a knockout at the park, but I thought it had a lot. Of, you know, it felt like it had an equal amount I, of potential. I admit, I haven't actually gotten around to trying that yet because I've just not caught up. Yeah, I, I mean, I liked it. I just, it wasn't like, it wasn't instantly. Oh my god, this is the new best thing ever. Like some of these other books from him. Uh, that's because like. so it's only an eight issue book. That's that's true. Maybe <laughs> it has to be twelve. It has to be twelve to, to have it's magic, that magic. I don't know. Uh, but you know, I'm looking forward to more of it. Uh, so yeah, I, I like this idea. That DC are always going to have them on two prestige books. You know that because Mister Mer, or not Mister Mer, sorry, Strange Adventures and Rorschach are both ending around the same time. We just started Supergirl, so we'll have Supergirl and Human Target at the same time for a while. Are you, are you forgetting Batcat? Oh, and Batcat as well. <laughs> yes, Batcat. So maybe three, maybe they have three at a time. I, I, I'm cool with that too. I, I do think he's better suited to these books than he is the big on series. Abso- a- absolutely. And, you know, keep taking these characters who are relatively B-tier, or in this case, honestly, C or D-tier. It, uh, it's it's no, a this... win for me as well, in the sense that if there's one that I don't feel like I want to read that I'm not enjoying as much, I just skip it. It's not like I'm missing, a, you know, the main Bat book or something else major. And no disrespect to Human Target, but let's face it, he's not, he's not a B-tier character. He's at least C-tier. <laughs> if we're being generous. Yes. You know, more like DRE. Just despite having had a TV show. And and that's not a judgment on the character, that's not a judgment of the quality of the stories he's had in the past, but just in terms of cred, just in terms of his stature, he's he's not B tier, he's like C tier at best. Yeah. Uh, but that's cool. I, I'm, I'm more excited, I am more than excited for Tom King to make me give a shit about this guy. <laughs> like more, I assume uh, he has more free reign with those sorts of characters. Oh, probably, yeah, probably. Uh, and then next up, we have Aquaman Green Arrow, The Deep Target. Issue one, which I guess is a new mini series. Uh, so... Yeah, seven issue mini. We spoke about this already, right? Yeah, yeah, we already spoke about this, so we can move on. But uh, cool. And then we got a really interesting, weird one here, which is Batman: The Audio Adventure Special, which is a one shot. So I'm not going to count it. It's not a new series, mm-hmm. but it is an 80 page one shot where the cast of the audio podcast, which is part of HBO Max, are contributing stories to this one shot. So this is kind of a weird tie in to uh, another medium, which is kind of... Yeah, we neat. spoke about the the, uh, the audio uh, series because I was excited for it. I think it's got Jeffrey Wright as, I want to say, as Batman. Interesting. Uh, uh, Jeffrey Wright's definitely in the cast. I'm confident on that. Uh, I'm, I I love audio dramas. I, I'm a sucker for them, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that. This I'm less excited for, but I mean, it's, a, it's an oversized one-shot. Uh, given that they keep adding more books, I feel like an eighty-page book that like this that's so separate is probably going to get missed <laughs> on the week it comes out. Yeah, I'm fairly, quite sh- likely. I'm fairly sure of it. Uh, one that's not going to get missed though, despite it being a almost hundred-page book, because <clears throat> it is a celebratory issue, and we do tend to cover those. Wonder Woman 80th anniversary, a hundred-page super spectacular. That's not that she already had one of these for a seven hundred and fiftieth issue, so they're yeah. they're having their cake and they're eating it too with Wonder Woman. This is why you say, "Oh, it'll get covered because it's an anniversary." I mean, you I mean you can prepare. I can't guarantee. I mean, they, they just had one of these like not that long ago. Yeah, but I mean, we got it was Becky, within the last year, surely. We got Becky Clinton make it. It wasn't the last year. It was longer than a year ago. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe not by much though. It was like January or something like that last year. I'm sure. That's There's... a year and a half. You said within the last year. Uh, all right, fine, but it's not that long ago. <laughs> anyway so story by Becky Clune Michael W. Conrad Jordi Belair Mark Wade, Tom King Steve Orlando G. Willow Wilson 
uh, Amy Reader and more. Uh, so some interesting creative names in there for the writing side. We got uh, Jim Chung, uh, Polina Jian Cho. If I'm probably butchering that, apologies. Uh, Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, uh, Amy Reader, Evan Doc Shainer, Isaac Goodhart, Gabriel Piccolo, Piccolo, and more. So uh, a lot, lot of interesting names. That's, that's what they always like. Every time I think, oh, maybe I won't do one of these. There's at least a handful of names in there that you're like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, Mark, I mean, Mark mm. Wade doing DC work is it's a special thing to behold. I mean, Luis Garcia Lopez is about doing interior work. Yeah, oh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of reasons to. That's huge. And there's, you know, there's going to be a bunch of variants that are probably going to be wonderful. Although they can't do the decade ones anymore, unless they just did them again. Because they already did the decade variants, but whatever. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of nice covers already there. I, I, you know, I, fine. Oh, I that Bartel wraparound. I'm still kind of pissed, though, that they just kind of ignored the fact that Supergirl had a 60th anniversary like last year. Yeah, no one gives a shit about 60. Right. And, you know, um, what's, what's his face? Writer from, like, before New 52. Uh, Sterling Gates? Yeah, that sounds right. Uh, he actually went to DC and said, Hey, it's Supergirl 60th, you know, can you do something? Because I'll, I'll contribute, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll write one shot or something. <laughs> and, because he said this on Twitter, and it was basically the response from the executive or whoever it was that responded to him, uh, was basically, it shrugged and went, she's got a show. <laughs> and that was something like that. It was something to that effect. Uh, so it's a real shame. It's a real shame that certain characters get glossed over when I think... 60th is just as cool. There's nothing wrong it's with not. the 60th. 60s, no, 60s are nothing, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, they were celebrating Batman and Superman's 60th 20 years ago. You know they were. They, they, they shouldn't have been. <laughs> Shut up. Because uh, it is worth mentioning, they're, they're declaring October 1st, I think it is, Wonder Woman Day, because it's the actual anniversary. So, uh, I'm sure Matt's fine with her getting a date, although he's probably going to cry into his pillow that Superman didn't really get as much of a a spotlight. He didn't get the day to the same extent. No. I mean, he did when Action 1000 came out. That was mm. a pretty big Superman day. Yeah, it was, but I don't, I don't know if they called it Superman day, though, in the same way. Because uh, there's a lot of stuff for Wonder Woman. There's a new series. I'll, I'll tell you, Mark, here we got a Black Label book that was announced and teased so long ago, but it's finally on the solicitation and coming. Uh, this is a Kelly Sue DeConnick written, which is cool, because we like her Aquaman. I've liked some of the stuff that she's I've, I've dabbled in with her writing. Uh, Wonder Woman Historia, the Amazons issue one. This is a three issue prestige, seventy two page per issue, black label behemoth. <laughs> mm. Prestige plus again, so it's the different trim size. Yep, yep. Uh, uh, the wait is over. You know what? I'm surprised I remembered this existed before. To be honest. Uh, so <laughs> you know, I did just because I remember it. Be I remember this. I remember this cover. Yeah. Like they they announced this particular cover that all that time ago. Yeah, this was because this was when there was a black label series of announcements, and then we thought black label was dead because they you went thought so black long. label was dead, and then like three weeks later, it was justified. <laughs> <laughs> it was a justified speculation at that time. <laughs> they brought out the one with Batman's dick, and then it like just kind of <laughs> went away, just stopped. <laughs> and now you can't move for black label books. Hey, and most of them have been great, so I can't. <laughs> I'm not complaining. <laughs> no, do you know what the the batting average is pretty solid. <laughs> <laughs> it just it started off in a really shaky, uh, you know, sh- sh- shaky dick-filled ground, shall we say? Um, so we yeah, shall. it's that's cool. It's coming. It's cool. It's coming. Uh, look forward. But we got another new Wonder Woman related series. Just, um, just oh. before you move on, the the interesting thing about that book as well is um, him and his own doing the art for the first issue. Okay. Uh, okay. Gene Hart and Nicholas Scott doing issues. I assume two and three respectively. It makes sense. I mean, they're, they're 72 pages, so having a, an artist for each issue, because I presume that they're doing different eras of like Amazon history or something like that, because that was the premise, right? I, I assume so, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I've tallied down the next one, uh, which is number nine of new books. This, this is uh, a miniseries, one of six. This is Nubia and the Amazons, issue one, story by Vita Yalea and Stephanie Williams, with art by Aletha Martinez. So here's the solicit text for this one. After the thrilling events of Infinite Frontier, Nubia becomes Queen of Themyscira. So it's interesting to see some fallout from Infinite Frontier kind of starting to show up mm-hmm. in these solicit texts. Uh, so I guess it's Nubia role. We got, we got Yara out there. Obviously, Dana, we're expecting back. All these things. Uh, but now the new title also brings challenges with the unexpected arrival of new Amazons. 
Our hero is forced to reckon with her past and forge a new path forward with her sisters. Little does she know that a great evil grows beneath the island and it's up to the former guardian of Doom's doorway to unite her tribe before the paradise is lost forever. So, yeah. Mm. Neat. I'll uh, we'll definitely give that a try. Um, you know, I, I think I've enjoyed the teases of the character as much as I wasn't into the backup that uh, she was in. But that was just any, you know, sure. typical you know, quality issues rather than anything to do with the character. Uh, so, interesting, we're expanding the Wonder Woman line quite a bit here, where much like Batman and Superman, she's going to have a, 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 a family of titles. Uh, and arguably already does, because Wonder Girl's already started, but uh, neat. Uh, then Wonder Woman, The Adventures of Young Diana, Special Issue 1. This is a, a one-shot, obviously aimed at... Uh, uh, so it's just a collection of all the backups that are in Wonder Woman right now. Oh, re- oh really? Okay, so it's a reprint mm-hmm. then. All right. I mean, because at the minute you have to buy Wonder Woman, right? True, but yeah, yeah. That's, you can buy this and just give it to, you know, the, the younger it's, audience. It's basically a small trade of just that stuff on its own. Essentially. Yeah. Which I'm kind of all for, given given the target audience for that is so separate anyway. Um, it, it makes sense to me to have that just as a an accessible thing to hand to the kids. I feel like they'd be better fitted, though, like putting a hardcover on it and actually releasing it. Maybe put a few extras in. So it's actually on bookstore shelves. It feels like, releasing this as a one-shot comic feels like it limits it a little bit for reaching that audience, but... Yeah, that's fair. It is what it is. Uh, there's a Wonder Woman issue 1 special edition. This is uh, a free slash 25 cent. Uh, it's 25 cents to retailers, but the yeah. idea is it's it's free. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's just it's just a, a reprint, right? Of uh, It is, yeah. Uh, you know, past stories. And much like that, a... I think that's just the the first issue of the Rocker Run. Yeah, and much like that, there's a couple other of these free one shots. So there's basically just three comic book based style things, but they're they're previews of some of the the graphic novels that have come out uh, or are coming out. Uh, so you have Wonder Woman: The Tempest Toss Special Edition issue one. So it's like, it's just a preview. It's like forty pages of the graphic novel, uh, and then same with Diana, Princess of the Amazon Special Edition issue one. Uh, same same idea. Although this one less pages, thirty two instead of forty, but same idea. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, cool. It's basically just here's a teaser of these graphic novels to maybe convince people to maybe come back and buy the full books. Uh, nothing wrong with that. So neat. Um, and there we got something back, which I'm glad's coming back. I was I was worried it might not, but uh, Hell House Comics is making its return in it October, lives. no less, which makes sense once again. Yeah. So I'll tally this one down because this is a new mini series, although it's obviously a spiritual sequel. Uh, to one of the previous series, and that is is called Refrigerator Full of Heads. Obviously, a play on the basket full of heads from before. Um, and our friend Tim, uh, co-host of Screams After Midnight, did crack a joke, which did pop me a little bit, which is, this is suitable for DC. Because, of course, the term fridging someone did come from DC. Uh, it still baffles me that that's become a term in just in critiquing popular fiction of any kind in like, mainstream. Uh, it was a Kelsey Simone who, who coined it, right? I think so, yeah, but it, it came from a Kyle Rayner story of all places. A mm-hmm. Kyle Rayner Green Lantern story in comics is what led to the fridging of someone, which is now used when people talk about movies and TV shows. It's it's just kind of fascinating, but that's where it came from. But anyway, uh, so this is uh, written by Rio Ewers. I, 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 a crime novelist, apparently. Oh, yeah. The, the end of the solicit text. N- never heard of them, and I apologize if I'm butchering the name, but uh, I think that's how you go with that. Uh, Tom Fowler is on art. Six issue book. Cool front cover. Uh, Hell House Comics is back, and heads are going to roll for making readers wait. Uh, the new wave of titles begins with a rancid return trip to the bloody Brody Island. For a year now, the mysterious axe that unleashed a pandemonium during the hurricane of 83, which is what the first book was, uh, has waited at the bottom of the bay, but nothing that powerful stays buried. Brody Island has new visitors and a new sheriff in town too, not to mention a dangerous great white shark. <laughs> Given how much that first book sort of like referenced Jaws and harking back mm-hmm. to Jaws and the, and the vibe of the town, the fact that we're actually bringing in a shark is kind of wonderful. Uh, and when a vacationing couple, Calvin uh, Beringer and Ar- Arlene Fields, I feel like Arlene's a reference to a character from something, but I, I'll have to think about it, find themselves on the wrong side of Brody's unsavory elements, their beach combing will turn up something a lot sharper than sea glass. 
so this is neat. Obviously, I, I was mildly disappointed that it wasn't uh, Joe Hill writing because I, I really enjoyed that miniseries. I know not everyone was as hot on it as I was, but um, obviously it's, it's open season. Uh, you know, Rio here might be might be great. I don't this know. is still uh, Joe Hill curating the line allegedly. Yes. So his name. Um, interestingly, it said that the new wave of titles begins with this, which implies there are more still to come. It would surprise me if they're just doing one a month, maybe, to, to start. Given the amount of new titles that they've got this month, I yeah. can't blame them. Even though it would make sense to start them all in October, but I, I kind of appreciate that they didn't. <laughs> for, for, yeah. for for time reasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, that is cool. Uh, I'm was that book that. number 10? That was book number 10, I, I concur with that. Uh, and then we got another horror book here, another new one, DC Horror Presents. So then DC Horror Presents The Conjuring The Lover, which was a tie-in to the, the Conjuring movies, obviously. Uh, so this is separate from that, this is just DC Horror Presents Soul Plumber Issue 1. Which, uh, without reading the text, which I'm about to do, I don't think it ties into it, I think we'll find out. <laughs> uh, so, six issue book, again, this is a story by Marcus Parks, Henry Zabrowski, and Ben Cassell, with art by John McCrea. So we get three... Names on the John rain. McCrea, I believe, just did the issue of Swamp Thing. That the, sounds right, la- yeah. That sounds la- right. Last issue, Life 5, that we kind of loved. I can kind of actually I can see it in the cover, actually. They look similar, art style wise. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I can see it. Which is a good sign, actually. Uh, That's a good eyes, especially yeah. for a horror book. Yeah. Uh, from the creators, uh, from the, sorry, from the creators of Last Podcast on the Left. Do you know what? I, I, you know, I vaguely heard this this week that they were collabing with mm. DC, uh, and I didn't realize it was this. Uh, so, exorcism just got a whole lot easier. After attending a seminar hosted in a hotel conference room by a mysterious group called the Soul Plumbers, Edgar Wiggins, disgraced former semin- seminary school student, discovers that he thinks the secret to delivering souls from the thrall of Satan. <laughs> but after stealing the blueprints and building uh, the machine himself out of whatever he can afford from the salary as a gas station attendant, Edgar misses at the demon and instead pulls out an interdimensional alien with dire consequences for all of mankind. So he tries to basically become like a do-it-yourself ghostbuster. <laughs> Fine, yeah. Yeah, and then accidentally unleashes a, go- a interdimensional alien. You know what? That sounds like fun. I like the cover. I, I like the art from that issue of Swamp Thing. So, um, and I'm all for more DC uh, horror, to be honest. And last podcast on the left is pretty well regarded people yeah people love that that show i've I've heard a lot of people talk about it uh yeah so very neat uh do they make for good comic book writers we'll find out but uh uh, yeah the only other time i think of comic book writers you know comic book creators doing comics was uh there was a couple during the uh war of the realms tie-ins uh from marvel Mm. yeah you actually Uh, um, you actually just the sentence you just said was the only time I remember comic book creators writing comic books. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm pretty sure almost every comic book we've ever read <laughs> falls under that descriptor. <laughs> God damn it. You... Po- podcast creators. Yes, there you go. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, why would you forget yeah. the word podcast? It's not like you, you interact it's not like with I'm on them. one right yeah. now. <laughs> uh, so there you go. So that's uh, Soul Plumber. And hence ticks off my 11 new books. You're right. I didn't tally the 11. <laughs> I was like, I only got 10, but it was that one. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Uh, and sadly, for my time and reading sake, I was interested in almost all of them. Uh, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a lot of books. Uh, hopefully they're. I didn't check the dates as we were going, but hopefully they're nice and spread out throughout the uh the month. They're almost certainly like all stacked on week two or four. <laughs> you know what? It's fine. You know what? We'll we'll just have to break a record that week for uh podcast length. Uh, <laughs> join us this week for the six hour edition of Comics from the Mollybird. I will be asleep halfway through. <laughs> I'm just going to joke six hours until we get there, because then when it t- turns out to be four and a half, it won't seem so bad. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> that's the that's the plan. Uh, so the rest of the books here should be quicker, because uh, this is just you know going through what's expected. Action Comics 1036 uh, is coming out. More Philip Cody uh, Johnson, uh, Sean Lewis, presumably on the backup. 
Nice enough cover. The cool. only interesting thing about this is, as seen by the cover, Superman's leading the authority team there, which obviously we've got the, the Grant Morrison mini. Uh, since you mentioned that, be setting that up. Then, since you mentioned that, I'll mention the news here related to that, which is that was meant to be double shipping the four issues, and instead, at the behest of retailers, might I be add, retailers requested, and based on their feedback, DC have decided to delay issue two, which was supposed to be out the same month as issue one, and they're going to come out monthly instead. So this is actually something where, because of the type of book it is, and maybe the pre-orders, perhaps? Uh, that yeah, they're... there is an exception to that. I mean, one, the reason that they could get out so quick anyway was, we've known about this book. It was all done. In some form or other yeah. for over a year, so it's definitely all done. Um, issues three and four, which are the final issues, are still only two weeks apart. So September 14th and September 28th. I think that is because we've got like this uh, mm. action comics issue in October, presumably near the start of October. Yeah, they also mentioned they needed this out first that all of issue two will be returnable uh, to retailers. So they're making it very friendly to retailers to uh, have people jump on mm. for this. So that's neat. That's neat. I, I wasn't expecting that to tie, you know, actually tie into the current Superman books, but here it is. That's an action. So uh, it sounds like it may actually be super relevant. <laughs> <laughs> so even if I'm yeah, not might actually have to read it. If I'm not feeling it, I may have to just struggle through for the sake of knowing what the hell's going on. Then again, it's a great more so because I might still not know what's going on. Uh, oh, bold claim there though that, that solicit the biggest Superman event since the death and return of Superman begins here. Oh, that is very bold. But I mean, honestly, Johnson he's been pelling he's been pelling on the weight of the Superman stories. They feel big and heavy, so it wouldn't surprise me to be honest if he actually pulls it off. It, it might be true. Yeah. Uh, Aquaman: The Becoming Issue Two. Of course, this is a new mini. Uh, where who did I say last week? I said I had the wrong you, name. You last said Khalid. I did say Khalid. That's right. Yes. Uh, so oh, that's cool. Uh, Calder was what I meant to say, but even that's yes. still technically wrong. And e even that, you meant Jackson. I meant Jackson. Jackson Hyde. Well, it's not my fault. He's got like multiple names that don't, aren't consistent. Every superhero has multiple names. <laughs> well, yeah, but he has three because he also has Aqualad. All right, fine. And technically four now if he's becoming Aquaman. Now, now he's <laughs> he's got a fourth name. Sure. <laughs> but anyway, so issue two of that. That's just issue two of six. Uh, we got Batman 89 issue three. I am looking forward to checking out these uh, movie continuation uh, books. So, uh, do we know who that's about to be on the cover? It's just a random cop? I don't recognize it looking like anyone from the movie. Yeah, I don't recognize it. Yeah. So, hey. Uh, oh, that variant's very pretty, actually. Oh, baby. That's because it's Lee Weeks. And it's Lee, Weeks. Lee, Lee Weeks can, can draw some art. Oh, jeez. That is a gorgeous cover. Uh, Batman and Bigby, a Wolf and Gotham issue two. This is the the crossover with uh, what do we call it? Tables. Tables. That's the name of the book. Uh, so that's still going. Cool. Batman Reptilian issue five, issue five of six. This is the the Garth Ennis flat label book. Um, so that's cool. We got Batman the Adventure Continues season two, issue five. So that's still going. We got Batman Catwoman issue eight of twelve. So that's about two thirds through. Then come come October. Um. I don't know if you noticed uh, last time, but issues 7, 8, and 9 uh, will all have uh, Liam Sharp on art. I don't know if I did notice that, actually. Uh, yeah. I guess it's just to give Clayman a chance to just do those last few. And... Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sharp confirmed it on Twitter earlier. Maybe there'll be a... Maybe there'll be a, a slight creative reason as to why the art's different for those three issues. Maybe they'll like, have a... Uh, I will give... Yeah, I, like I, say, I haven't always loved Tom King's stuff. Mm -hmm. I didn't always love his Batman. But it always felt really neat when it changed artists. Yeah, he, he always seemed to have like an end story reason that justified having a different style. So maybe there's like a, a, a genuine kind of interlude quality to these three issues that will make it... Or maybe not. Maybe, maybe it's just like we have to have a different artist. And, you know, Liam Sharp's not a bad guy. I mean, he's not similar to Clay Man in any way, so it'll be interesting to see... How they pull yeah, that which, off. Which makes you feel like it has to be doing something different. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to feel really jarring. Yeah. Uh, Black Manta issue two. I'll be honest, I forgot there was a Black Manta mini that started the previous solicits, but there you go. Me too. Uh, there it is. Uh, Blue and Gold issue four, uh, aka Matt's most anticipated book of the century. Uh, <laughs> I'll leave it to next week. So that's still going. Uh, Challenge of the Super Sons issue seven, reprint the digital series. Still going. Checkmate issue five. Oh, look at that. A gorgeous Alex Maleev cover. Who would have thought it? Um, is that not a mini? Sorry? Is Checkmate not a mini series? I believe it was, yeah. I was under the impression it was, but there is no 
mini series tag on that solicit. It could just be a simple solicit, uh, you know, mess uh, mess up, or it could just be that it changed to an ongoing. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but hey, I mean, out of all the things Bendis is doing right now, it's easily the thing I've liked the most. There's only been one issue, admittedly, but uh, you know. <laughs> Uh, Christian Lobo issue 5, so that's still going. DC Horror presents The Conjuring, The Lover issue 5, so that's still not quite done. Uh, oh, this is the last issue here. This is the fifth and final issue of that series. Uh, Deathstroke Inc. issue 2, so that's the Joshua. I forgot about that as well. Yeah, I forgot about this. Joshua Williamson's writing this Deathstroke as well. Deathstroke in space. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Future State Gotham issue 6. Uh... Oh, this is an ongoing, yeah. For you know, I was, I wasn't, I couldn't remember if that was. Uh, yeah, I believe the idea was it was going to change yeah, to different. That's right. Stories, anyway. That's right. Green Lantern issue seven, so that's uh, still going with Jeffrey Thorne. Uh, Sinestro's on that cover there, still to be, unless it's going to be a black and white cover, which it could be, but it's. Uh, I assume it's going to be. It's a very nice cover if it is though. Yeah. Uh, Hardware season one issue three. This is your Mailstone uh, book, uh, so that's going. Harley Quinn, the animated series, Eat, Bang, Kill Tour, issue two. Are you uh, excited for this? I am. High-end series, yeah. I, I I mean, that series is phenomenal, so more please. I think you were missing a last solicit, so I think, I don't know if you, you spoke. Uh, probably that. was. I'm sure Matt was excited for it, though. Uh, Icon and Rocket, season one, issue four. Again, more Mailstone books still going. Uh, Justice League 69. Uh, that's a nice Naomi cover. Oh, uh, there. Mm. Uh, oh, it is. Taking a selfie. Very hip for the kids. Uh, Justice League Infinity issue 4. This is the GM Demetis and James Tucker book, which, you know, I, I'm probably not even going to try issue one of this. Uh, no, this is the one continuing the Justice League Unlimited show yeah. continuity. So, I mean, it may, be, it, may be, it may be really fun, but uh, there's just no room for it. Uh, much like Justice League Last Ride issue 6, even though it's Zarsky, uh, issue took him out in a busy and- week. Can we talk about how good that cover is? It's a, it's a very nice cover. Uh, is that Derek Robertson, that one? Uh, I, I don't know Robertson and Choi well enough to, to it's, know. Uh, yeah. It's a very menacing dark side cover uh, where he's holding up Superman by the cape. It's very, very pretty. It's very painted looking. You've got a lot of paint splotches. Like oil pastels. Yeah. Uh, Legends of the Dark Knight, issue six. Uh, Becky Clinton, Matthew Rosenberg. Um... That's cool. This is a digital reprint series, right? It doesn't mention it in that text, but I was under the impression, yes. The fact is, is I feel like I had, a st- I had a tried this when it started, but obviously it's already started and I didn't try it, so was it just busy that w- week and I just glossed over it? Like, Yeah, I don't know. Weird. Uh, Mr. Miracle of Source of Freedom, issue 6, of 6, so that's wrapping up in October. Uh, Pennyworth, issue 3, I forgot this existed. Uh, John, there's so much to solicit that I forgot existed. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't expect I'll continue. This is issue three of seven for the record. This is a mini series. And this is the one that's tied into the show, right? Yeah, which is pretty much why I'm not even probably going to try it, to be honest. Uh, easy skip for me, I think. Uh, Robin issue seven, still going. Uh, Robin's reading his, his manga. Little twerp that he is. Uh, we got Ruby Justice League issue seven. Scooby Doo, where are you? Issue one twelve. Shazam issue four, wrapping up that tie in miniseries to the Teen Titan stuff. Uh we got Static Season One issue five. That's still going. That's five of six. And Suicide Squad issue eight. Uh Robbie Thompson series still going. Suicide Squad King Shark issue two, which I also kinda of forgot about. But this is Tim Silly writing this, so I'm actually It's Scott uh, Collins, I know. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. That, that was like a, one of those things last month that was like, oh this this may be kind of fun. Uh mm. so we'll see. Superman 78, issue 3. Uh, well, that second cover on that one's quite nice. Uh, Lois sitting on the Daily Planet globe. and mm, Another another Lee Weeks cover. Oh, yeah. I guess he's just doing both of those then, those movies. I guess he's doing variants for yeah. both those books, yeah. Uh, Superman V's Lobo, issue 2. Tim Sicily and Sarah Beatty. I'd forgotten about it, but I remember it now. I'm seeing the, the team uh, with Mika and Dolfo on the art. Uh, so... You know yeah. what? DC, stop putting out interesting things. I mean, I, I, don't get me wrong, I'm sure some of them won't actually be that great, and I'll just I'll ha- be happy to drop them, but on paper a lot of these things are interesting. <laughs> Too much. Superman, Son of Kal-El, issue 4, of course, our Tom Taylor Superman book, which we are very which, much excited for. We should mention the slight news to that, in that the first issue has been delayed. By two weeks. Uh, 
yeah, it, it was supposed to be this week. We should have been talking about it today. Which kind of, kind of I, glad we're not, given how many books we have. Yes, uh, I was going to tell Matt the, the good news that it's been delayed out of a week that he is missing. But unfortunately, it's been delayed to a week that he's also missing. Because <laughs> Matt's back next week and then off again for a weekend. So Yeah. Um, they delayed issue two as well, which was supposed to be week two in August. So they've delayed that to week four in August. So it's just a week four book now, I guess. I guess, yeah. Uh, I mean, this claims it's week two, but we'll see how much this week four pushback uh dominoes mm -hmm. on yeah uh so teen titans academy issue eight next uh, batman scooby-doo mysteries issue seven the flash seven seven five uh a lot to talk about on that uh and interestingly this is a, a five dollar 48 page issue um which i think they have been oversized uh, uh yeah then. definitely some of those issues were like i remember the first one yeah. definitely was so, yeah, I mean, I do kind of appreciate them going with a different tactic to this, where they're not doing a backup, they're just going to make it bigger. And it's like, the, the main story has more time. So instead of double shipping, you get a, a bigger issue every month. I mean, I think that's an interesting... Or they do what they did this time, and throw in an annual, and it's double shipping and oversized. <laughs> One month, though. I mean, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I can't be too bad. Yeah. Uh, Joker issue 8. Uh, so that's still going, of course. And then... Uh, Aye. You know, I want to, okay, let's give Flash some credit here. It's a dollar cheaper than Joker, but actually has more pages. I just want to put, point that out. Yes, because what they're doing with Joker is bullshit. Yes. Ah. Anyway, uh, Joker presents Puzzle Box issue 3, which has had kind of a weird release digitally, because I was mean to kind of try this, but then it kind of had a weird release and it was hard to kind of fit in. These, these digital first things are always hard to manage. Yeah, I don't think they've done the first issue in print yet. no i don't think so um nice house in the lake issue five obviously we're looking forward to that. that's a very nice cover actually with all the uh the meteors or whatever i will else. say i am quite annoyed at what dc are doing with this book you know what what's the thing that we've been asking for after the two issues oh like uh like on the credits page or a, you know like yeah a, like a, 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 a cheat sheet yeah. yeah oh they're doing it as a 1 to 25 variant cover on, on the like <gasps> issue one or two third printing You know what, it's, it's, it's bad to the point where I feel like I'm going to have to just like go and get this cover and like have it up on my screen on my computer when I'm reading, just so I can yeah. refer to it when I'm reading the book, which I shouldn't have to do, so. No. Damn you, DC. Uh, the Swamp Thing issue 8. Speaking of nice covers. <laughs> um, oh, damn, Perkins. I know. Uh, it's, it's a really nice tree. That's all I'll say. It's a really nice tree. Mm. Uh, teen, oh, sorry, Titans United issue 2. I forgot about this. Yeah, I don't even remember what this is. What the hell is this? <laughs> There's a cover. Some plot against them. Uh, Kevin Scott, Jose Lewis. This is the one that was the weird Titans team. Oh right? yes, yes, yes. And oh, because Steph's on the team, which made me think, oh, I have to try it. Yeah. Okay. And I, Kevin Scott, has done a lot of Marvel Star Wars stuff. He's actually done a lot of Star Wars stuff in general. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm reading a Star Wars novel by him right now. Um. Which is just enough to get me interested, I guess. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll try it, just because the, the member's on the team. Uh, Wonder Girl issue 5. Obviously, excited. It's been good. Uh, also 6, we're double shipping? We're double shipping in October, look at that. It, yeah, issue 5 has been resolicited from September, so I guess it's been delayed. Oh, it's delayed? Okay, so, that was, so we're not going to get one in September. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Alright, okay. And issue 6 is a different artist. Uh, Layla Del Duca, who the name does ring a bell. It was probably bound to happen uh, at some point. Uh, yeah, cover's still very pretty though. I mean, it's obviously, I assume it's still. Uh... It may not be actually. It, it, the colors are very similar to the. the no, it's um, the Matteo Scalera cover according yeah. to, this, uh, to the text. I just, I felt like it was just the faces that gave it away. I felt like the rest of it could have passed. Yeah, for Jones, but the faces just kind of gave it away there. Uh, Wonder Woman 780, just, you know, the, the ongoing. Uh, Which, by the sounds of it, because uh, this is an oversized issue, This is no, there's no backup in this one. They're doing like, like what yeah. Flash has. Yeah. And yeah. is the return of Diana to the regular world. Yeah, just oversized in the sense that there's no backup. It's not, like, any bigger than, or more expensive than normal. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, but they've taken those pages and used them for main story. Yes. Uh, and this is her coming back to the world, right? Back to regular yeah. continuity. Uh, Wonder Woman Black and Gold, issue 5, so that's still going as well. Um, 
so neat. Um, and that wraps up the single issues, finally. Uh, what a, what a solicitous that was. Uh, yeah, uh, just, you know, I'm happy to see they're still doing the Batman Dark Knight Detective books, collecting the old Detective Comics issues. Uh, volume 6 of that is in these solicits, which is nice to see. Um, yeah. So, uh, that's cool. A new reprinting of a long Halloween Dark Victory Deluxe issue? Is, is that both of them? Or is that... Or the 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 naming it that way now, so that you know it's a sequel. Uh, the new edition of an all time classic features the gripping sequel. I don't know. think it's just the sequel. Uh, there's no page. Why is there no page count? That's weird. There are four hundred and sixteen pages. Oh, it's, it's just that one then, because that's their yeah. issues. It's just the one. Yeah. Uh, okay, fair enough. Yeah, they're they're, they're both weird well, naming. Long though. Halloween's twelve issues, Dark Victory's thirteen, because it's got a zero issue. So. Yeah, it's just the one. They're just naming it that way so you know it's a sequel, which is just clunky. <laughs> like, don't... It is. I guess we're far enough away from Long Halloween now that but just, just... You know, there are casual audiences that would have no idea. But yeah, we'll just put it as a separate thing. Like, Batman Dark Victory, and then have like a bubble that says the sequel to Batman The Long Halloween, just on the cover. Just I know, do that. I know. Like, why do you, why you got to make it weird? Uh, so that's cool. Um... Yeah. Very interesting. I'm just skimming these trades to see if there's anything that else that sticks out as being notable. Superman Batman Omnibus Volume 2. Uh, cool. Um, yeah, that, that's the that's the one that started with Loeb. Obviously Loeb was far gone from it by the time Yeah. By the time that happened, but uh by the time this you know what this omnibus contains, but that's just that run. Um uh so Ramby Swamp Thing interesting to see how they're collecting that which is the two issues of the future state and then issues one to four of the main box so i assume then the rest will be yeah because i mean that makes that a 12 issue book right because it's 10 issues is the yeah the actual run so that, that means, smart. yeah i'll be two six issue books that does make sense um so cool all right yeah oh and uh wonder woman silver age omnibus volume one so they're starting off silver age wonder woman which it's actually really nice because it felt like Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman feel like it was just Golden Age, Golden Age. So it's nice to start to do Silver Age stuff for those funny characters. Mm-hmm. Um, and usually because it means that they eventually end up digitally as well, because it's, it's this era that tends to be missing when you look in Comicsology or DC Universe. So this hopefully means that a lot of those issues will be getting remastered and end up on uh, yeah. the digital platforms. So, cool. All right, there you go. October solicits, and oh boy, what a solicits they were. October's going to be busy. 